Proviron, Mesterolone, 1-Methyl DHT, the true historic wingman to steroid use. There's no question. This is an amazing agent, not really seen as a steroid. It's a very weak anabolic steroid. One of the most classic used agents, though, in the golden years of bodybuilding. Kind of a hush, hush, though, used by bodybuilders for cutting and as a synergistic agent to allow other steroids to get a better effect. The history of this amazing drug, 1934, right in the actual beginning of understanding what testosterone actually was, scientifically and chemically. Shearing in Germany developed it for medical use. And this was for hormone-related medical states, adverse states in men. And initially, it looked like it was secondary to states of depression, interestingly enough, and poor libidos. Now, unlike other anabolic steroids that were developed 20 years later, 30 years later, these were not for muscle wasting and cachectic medical states. These were really the state directly related to the androgenicity, if you will, of how a man feels well. There's a lot of work on this during that time period. This was also a medicine for fertility for young men that had problems with fertility. It was noted to increase sperm count and sperm motility, even to this day. Now again, this is a paradox again, secondary to the fact that other anabolic androgenic steroids will classically lower fertility. So this is incredible. Now, despite Proviron still being marketed by Bayer, who owns the patent to this currently, it's never been allowed to come into the United States of America. That's amazing. Pharmacology and structure. This is a classic DHT-derived steroid. It's called 1-methyl-DHT. And indeed, the simple addition is the addition of a methyl group at carbon number one. And that's all it is. It's actually the same structural modification of oral primobolan tablets. This is not a 17-alpha alkylated oral steroid. Now, what's interesting about this steroid and the reason why it's so weakly anabolic is that it's very rapidly inactivated in skeletal muscle by 3-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. That's just the nature of this medicine. So it's very weakly anabolic. The half-life of this drug is 12 hours. Now, the side effects of this drug. First off, the estrogenic effects are none. It's DHT derived. The amazing effects, the secret effects, if you will, and how it was utilized in the underground by bodybuilders is, the first part is here. It acts as a systemic anti-estrogenic agent. It has a very high binding affinity for aromatase enzyme, and it renders it inactive. Now, the actual mechanism of what this is and how it works has never been fully elucidated. I could tell you this though, and it does lessen the estrogenic forces of other aromatizable anabolic steroids. So, it's utilized by bodybuilders it's utilized in this culture for men that are using other wet steroids like testosterone derivatives and even medicines like D-ball, test and D-ball. Using Proviron with that has lessened the aromatizable effects and the estrogenic effects of those steroids. That's classic 
and that's history. That's amazing. The other side effects, and the second part to the wingman story is the androgenic effects. Again, this molecule and agent is classically DHT derived. So of course, the secondary male sex characteristics are gonna be pronounced. And that's why women do not use this or they use it minimally. Now, so in men, you're gonna see pronounced acne, male pattern balding, for sure. Now, the other amazing effect that has been found classically and utilized secondary to this agent is this high binding affinity for sex hormone binding globin. This is more than any other anabolic steroid. Other steroids that do this, as all anabolic steroids orally will do, Anavar Winstrol, classically known for this effect. This is a greatest effect for this medicine. So what it does, it liberates and it increases free testosterone levels. It also will liberate and increase other free metabolites of other anabolic steroids. So there's the other effect. There's the double wingman effect. You're using steroids. This medicine is going to be taking in conjuncture. Theoretically, it's going to lower the estrogenic effects of other steroids in addition to the fact it's not estrogenic itself. And it will also modify and cause chemical physiologic effects to increase your own androgen free states of testosterone and other metabolites of other steroids you may be using along with it. That's amazing. That's actually amazing. And that's the secret and that's how it's been used for decades. Now, under the androgenic effects, it's used, of course, during cycles. It's also been used as PCT. Now, there's no data for any of this, but I've looked into this and I've talked to so many men over decades myself, and it's noted to increase sperm count and sperm motility. It's noted to have minimal or even increasing effects on gonadotropins like luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Now, how does that work? That's incredible. Most steroids, anabolic and genetic steroids, will actually cause the other effect because they're going to disconnect, as we know, the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. This doesn't do that. It, at least inherently, it doesn't do it. And at least it doesn't do it for a short period of time or a suspect or a, a specific set of time period. I've proposed a hypothesis. So there's multiple properties and multiple factors going on in forces of synergy. Number one, it's high binding potential for aromatized enzyme will lower free estradiol levels. That in effect, we know will have an effect on the hypothalamus with the pituitary. We know that that's part how the circadian rhythm of how an intact man, not on steroids, produces testosterone from his brain, central nervous system, and his testicles, number one. Number two, this agent, remember, is DHT derived. It's gonna enter the testicle itself chemically. It's gonna stimulate the Leydig and Serratoli cells. So intratesticularly, you're gonna have an increased milieu for the increased production of semen. Now, it doesn't affect it enough for the body to start producing testosterone out into the periphery. That's for sure. But that's my philosophy on how you can take an anabolic energetic steroid and increase sperm and motility. It's used for fertility. Now, the amazing fact also is that the men that are using this drug, remember, they're using it alongside other anabolic steroids. So it's used during cycles more so than PCT. And this drug itself 
We don't know if it causes anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism. As a matter of fact, it looks like it's used to prevent that, or it would prevent that, or it would certainly remedy that. And that's why it was initially used for fertility for young men. Now, we don't know. There's no studies today on this. That's why we need to do studies. Side effects continued. Liver toxicity. Now, this is minimally, if at all, liver toxic. But don't get out there yet and start using this drug, please. There's a methyl group attached to C1. It's not a classically 17-alpha alkylated agent that we know are very liver toxic. That's for sure. And the reason for this is because of this adjustment chemically. And that's why when it's medically taken, it's, it has to be used multiple times per day. We know that this is an oral anabolic steroid agent. And there have been studies done on provirin by itself for TRT. And we saw that it increased the bad cholesterol, LDL, and it decreased the good cholesterol, HDL, significantly. So this is why it's not used in part for TRT consistently. It is interesting that for men that require TRT, proper sustainable doses of testosterone have a minimal effect or even a lowering effect on LDL. And again, they, they do affect HDL, but they can be minimal depending on the man's diet, genetics, and his behavior, not to mention other drugs that can be used to protect him. And that's what I do. So with close monitoring, TRT is going to be much better with testosterone esters than a drug like this. And that's a question I get from so many men. Doc, can Proviron be used for TRT? No. I just don't see it to be sustainable and safe. And this is the reason why, the cardiac issues. That's it. The history of Proviron. Another amazing agent that we have in the history of anabolic steroids in the world. Please be very careful with these agents. Please see a physician and understand that everything you take will have a potential adverse effect on your health in the short term and the long term. Thank you so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.